There comes a time in anybody's life when they pause to reflect how their life has gone and to look back and see the journey of life. I decided to make a visual memoir of the past uh, 60 years. So let me start on this journey. I started life with humble beginnings. I was born in a place called Uti, which is uh, in South India and the Nilgiri Hills. To lovely parents, my father is no more, but he was known as uh, Major Rustam Mehta. I'm very fortunate to have my mother alive, Bachu Mehta, who still lives in Uti. I have uh, an elder brother who is four years uh, older than me, and he is a very accomplished pilot. My parents are or originally from Hyderabad, but then they uh, came to Uti, and my father was the administrator of a very uh, prestigious public school called Lawrence School Lovedale. Uh, prior to that, my father uh, started his life in the uh, military and he was a major in the army. I left home at the age of 15 to join college. It was my father's desire that I become a doctor. So I landed up in Pune, which is 100 kilometers from Bombay, and I joined the Armed Forces Medical College and I did my medicine over there. I lost my father in uh, 2007 at the age of 87 and he was a major influence in my life also for my uh, two daughters a grandfather he was a very kind simple and generous man but the main thing was his simplicity and his kindness that he used to touch others and try and make a difference in a humble and simple way my wife Keron is a professional who has been teaching for the past 28 years. She has taught in every country that we have been in, and we have lived in six different countries in three continents across the world. What I've done over here is that I have laid out uh, my 60 years on this table to make it easy to show uh, the life's journey and the lessons that uh, I have learned. I have been married for almost 29 years, and so my family has been with my journey for half of it. This is the commendation that I got for uh, saving the life of a dangerously ill woman on the Amini Islands of Lakshadweep when I was sailing. Uh, a military background and a Navy background teaches you honesty, discipline, and conduct. My daughters often ask me, Daddy, what was the driving force? What brought you to WHO? Right through my college days, when I was a medical student, I was not inclined to the clinical specialties, but I was very interested in public health and preventive medicine. So right from those formative days, my life's ambition was to try and one day join WHO to do good, not only to individuals, but to communities, nations, and on a global health. So this is the journey that started and took us to the shores of Oman for 10 years with my wife and my one and a half year old daughter. In Oman, we spent 10 years and I rose up the ranks in Oman. I was the first expatriate epidemiologist to join the Sultanate of Oman. After finding my own feet, I started working with a very dynamic gentleman called Dr. Ali Jafar Muhammad. This was the time when my public health skills were honed. I became more mature. Professionally, I became much more confident at the national level. During my time for 10 years in Oman, I did not forget my life's dream, and I still continued to aspire to get into WHO. I kept trying, and from the contacts that I had developed, and a mentor called Dr. Zuhair Halaj, who was a very fine gentleman, had joined WHO, and he was the director of communicable disease, and he had told me, Firdosi, be patient, wait for a while, and I will find a place for you. And sure enough, he did what he said, and he said what he did. And that was my entry into 
WHO by fire. My wife, who is the bedrock of our family, stood by me and she said, we will take this challenge and if that is what makes you happy, I will stand by you and go with you uh, along the way. And that was our entry into WHO. I worked in Somalia for four years as a complex em emergency country. I was the medical officer of tuberculosis and all communicable disease. I'm very happy to say that when I joined Somalia, there were only nine TB centers. When I left Somalia, there were 27 TB centers covering all the districts of Somalia in a complex emergency situation. My family was located in uh, Kenya, and I used to fly from Kenya to Somalia in a 10-seater propeller aeroplane. We used to land on dirt strips. There were no airports. There were dirt strips. We used to land, get off, and then work over there for one week, two weeks at a time. It was very rewarding. Uh, it was very challenging. And there was an outstanding lady called Annalina Tonelli, who I worked with, who was like Mother Teresa, who did a wonderful job, but her life ended at the hands of a gunman, and we, she was gunned down uh, a few years after I left uh, Somalia. So I've been through all that, which makes me a much stronger person and a professional. From there, uh, I moved to uh, Indonesia, again with the help of an outstanding professional called Dr. Jay Narain, who was in the Southeast Asia office, and he wanted a dynamic medical officer for tuberculosis in Indonesia. I came in, took charge over there. It was the third highest burden country in tuberculosis in the world, but again, due to hard work, gaining respect, giving respect, I worked with the nationals and turned the tuberculosis program around. That was, again, a very good experience. I experienced the tsunami. I've been through the SARS in 2003 and the avian influenza in 2006, which again gives, has given a lot of experience. In 2009, I was offered this appointment and I have been here for the past five years as the representative. I have another two years to retire. I feel privileged to have been working in Sri Lanka. I feel Sri Lanka is a diamond and the definition of a diamond is a piece of coal which did well under pressure. And the thing about Sri Lanka is that it has done so much with so little. Another thing that I have always felt very strong is mentoring and motivating people. I had the fortune to mentor was Dr. Edwin Salvador, who worked with me for the past four years in the WHO uh, Sri Lanka office. He has written this. Thank you for helping me convert my mistakes into lessons, pressure into productivity, and skills into strength. Thank you for teaching me about respect, discipline, and about character. I tell my daughters and everybody, it is not your position that counts in life, it is your disposition. I'm very passionate and committed to five areas. One is non-communicable disease, mental health, suicide prevention, gender-based violence, and this is childhood developmental disorders. Anybody who talks to him will leave his presence uh, with an encouraged and um, good attitude. I do what I say and say what I do is the maxim which describes Dr. Mehta, and there's no doubt about that in my mind. What's amazing about him is, is his passion for his work. Apart from that, he's also a very kind, very caring, and very compassionate person. He's a quintessential professional. 
a very natural leader of men with a very high emotional quotient, uh, supports his staff very strongly, but expects 100% from them. He is a type of a person where he would like to see not only he is being told, but what is really happening. That is, and he, especially with regards to mental health. Disabled Kum Age Friendly City Project, uh, Dr. Mehetai, WHO ke team me kai natta me khau da kato ni ne. Dr. Meheta me hari ma practical kene ya Lanka we Lanka win ko Lanka bagi hita ni. Ya terunga ta ape ti ne me ape potential lega par madhu karan ne purvan kira. He's a very humane person. He gives a lot of encouragement to gender-based violence and he's very, very supportive on the issue. And he's there. If we have an issue, we go to him and we can talk anything with him. One of the things that really impressed me was his dedication to his work and also the fact that he always looks at the ground level because WHO is a policy level organization and he always looks at the household level. And one of the things that he keeps repeating is that all the answers are at the household level. Being here as a young professional officer in this organization, well, uh, there was a lot to learn. And, uh, and he has been an excellent mentor. I mean, he has taught me so many things about health. And I'm, I don't come from a health background, but I've learned so much through him working for this organization. And, uh, He's been an excellent mentor. WHO is a technical organization. His technical capacity is quite important for other people to respect us. So we are the leaders in health. So then I think he is playing that role very well. Working with Dr. Mehta has been a wonderful learning experience. He's extremely knowledgeable and he's really, really generous. He's helped so many people. I find it really easy to work with Dr. Mehta. Dr. Mehta is a great boss. I'd like to dedicate uh, this visual memoir to my family, that is my wife and my two daughters, uh, Diana and Tanya, who are the closest and the core of our existence. I would also dedicate this as a tribute to my parents. And I'm sure my father would be smiling from top and would be happy to see what his son is doing because it was the desire of my father while he was alive to see me become a WHO representative. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2007 and I got this opportunity in 2009. And this reminds me of this saying which was always on his desk. I shall pass this way but once. Therefore, any good that I can do or any kindness that I can show, let me do it now. Let me not defer or neglect it, for I shall not pass this way again. I, I use this on a daily basis. I always try to do my best and to reach out to people and I always try not to defer or neglect it. This is no attempt to flaunt any achievements. It has been a journey, not a destination. I would like to end on a philosophical note on a few things that are my takeaway messages that have helped me get by. Number one is the impossible can always be broken down into possibilities. However, one must remember that if you find a path with no obstacles, it probably does not lead anywhere by Frank Clark. I want to spread the knowledge and the lessons that I have learned through the years and empower people who have similar visions and dreams and tell them to go confidently in the direction of the dreams.